Here's a quick little video just showing about how to get the IRF G50 into oscillation. Uh, basically all you need is the on time off time settings and the gate. Um, between those three settings you can make it oscillate. So anyway right now I'm going to turn the gate down enough. Okay so there's very minimal gate resistance here. Now what I'm looking at here is basically this is across the shunt. And as I increase the gate resistance like this you can see the uh, oscillations start to kick in between the pulsing. Okay, so the gate resistance will do that as long as the frequency is not too high. If the frequency is too high, um, for example, if I increase the frequency, what it does is it brings the pulsing close together and it basically squashes out the oscillation. Okay, and if I slow the frequency down some, then it's not going to squash the oscillation. Okay, so if the frequency is too high, that's what it's going to do. Okay, so if I just keep increasing gate resistance, basically um, it'll go into full oscillation like this and will totally override the uh, timing signal, but you don't want that. You actually want to decrease the gate resistance, if you see that, until your pulses pop back up. Now what you can see is that these pulses are um, aperiodic. They're not uh, a perfect frequency. And you can see in between one, where one would normally be, you have one, it, it'll pulse a little bit before one time and a little bit after. And what that is, is a springing action of the oscillations um, determining uh, how the timing is going to take place. And so it, so it does override the timing signal with those pulses in between. And if you zoom into those spikes in between the pulses, uh, basically what you're going to see is ringing. Uh, they basically, it's a big, it's a big pulse like this and it basically just rings down. And so, uh, basically that is what the oscillation looks like. And, uh, so you don't want too high gate resistance because as you do go up in gate resistance, uh, you can reduce the spike, negative spike on the shunt. So you can see I'm going down to zero, you know, this is zero resistance right here uh, on the shunt. Not only did it kill the oscillation, but you can see the spikes are off the chart, but, but this is not what you want. Um, you can do it this way, and I'd recommend maybe do it before um, playing with the oscillation, but as I slowly increase, you can see the uh, negative spike on the shunt is decreasing, and soon I get right to a point and then there's the full-blown oscillation. I just reduce it a little bit. Okay. Now you can see that normally where I would have periodic pulses, um, I have maybe about two so-called ghosting images. This is not pulse triggering. It really is uh, timing. It really is pulsing at, those, at that aperiodic frequency determined by the oscillation, the springing action of the oscillation. And so this increases the gains um, substantially. Okay, now when you see this, um, and this is just on the shunt, uh, basically if you can get where you're seeing like two pulses at a time there, if you can get three or even four of those pulses on your circuit, you're golden. And so far with my particular setup, I have not been able to get three or four of those pulses, only two at the most. But this is the real oscillation um, overlaid in between each regular pulse, like I showed a long time ago, but this is just a different circuit. And, um, and so with this bigger coil here, the effect isn't as dramatic, but nevertheless, this is what you're looking for if you do want the oscillation. And you can see, for example, point, uh, this is 30 milliamps, or uh, 30 millivolts cross shunt half um, or I mean quarter ohm shunt and the voltage on the batteries right now are 24 so you can figure it out okay and so if I take the scope and I basically put it across uh, the coil um, this is what I get it takes a second for it to catch up Okay, and so you can see um, basically the pulse on top is the pulse, and you get this huge monstrous spike, and that's on the uh, that's across the coil. 
and you can see the oscillations in between and if I zoom into the os zoom in here increase that a bit you can see that um, I only got a few uh, okay there's about maybe four spikes or so um, kind of goes back and forth but instead of just these two images like this you want three or four and when you get that you, you're going to have the biggest gains you can possibly get um, I have not been able to get it with the circuit but basically if I zoom into these um, spikes in between the uh, pulsing each one keeps increasing in amplitude up and up and up and up until it gets to the on pulse spike ringing and it goes oscillation spike 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 and each of the spikes keep getting higher and higher in amplitude and inversely true on the bottom um, and so it kinda goes up like this so anyway that's what the oscillation looks like it's real that's um, something you can play with and the bigger uh, difference that you can get the biggest difference that you can get between the um, you saw 30 millivolts on the, across the shunt and you can see the RMS on this is about 14 15 volts right now uh, AC across the coil and so the biggest difference you can get between those two the bigger your gain is going to be and you can do the drawdown tests and everything to validate that but anyway hope this uh, helps you know what you're looking for